Hello, friends. To say that something is set in stone means that it is no longer changeable. It is fixed in place, no more moving parts. I've learned that really nothing is set in stone these days. Routines are disrupted, plans evaporate, jobs disappear, normal human interactions dissolve, basic items at the grocery store vanish. It kind of feels like we are living in quicksand. We've all seen it in movies where someone is sucked down into a pit of quicksand only to be saved at the last moment by someone extending a branch or a stick. And I grew up believing quicksand is a living creature that could suck me down into this bottomless pit. And then I learned that it is not quite the fearsome force of nature that you sometimes see in Hollywood. It is rarely deeper than a few feet. It is basically just ordinary sand that has been so saturated with water that the friction between the sand particles has been reduced. The result is a mushy mix of sand and water that can no longer support any weight. Yes, the more you struggle in it, the more you may sink. Apparently though, if you just relax, you will float because your body is less dense than quicksand. That sounds great, but I'm still going to freak out if I'm sinking in anything. This is the week when we celebrate the ascension of Jesus to heaven. In other words, we celebrate Jesus flying up while we are left sinking down below. I'll be honest, this part of the story does not seem equal to the bedrock events like Christmas and Easter or Pentecost. It feels like a, like a less important tacked on detail of the story. Oh, by the way, Jesus flew up to heaven while the rest of us were left sinking down below. I don't really want my Jesus flying up anywhere. I want him showing up with me where I am, walking alongside me. I want him right in the thick of the mushy, sinking mess with me, not flying up, up, away from me. Maybe this is why I've always been drawn to Batman more than Superman. Jesus and Batman are alike in that they always show up at the right time, on the ground, to do the right thing, saving lives, saving communities, saving the day. For Batman, saving an entire city. For Jesus, of course, saving the entire world. The Ascension, though, is really a story of goodbye. And perhaps it is the weight of the goodbye that is what bothers me about this story. Because goodbyes are hard, especially when you're not prepared for them. Yes, the disciples have been promised the presence of Jesus' spirit to remain with them. Yes, they have witnessed miraculous confirmation that Jesus is the risen Lord of all people. But as far as they can see in the moment after Jesus is obscured by clouds, they've been left alone in an overwhelming and dangerous situation, a task of spreading Jesus' love in a time of persecution and oppression. While they look up at their hope tied with Jesus flying up, up, and away, I'll bet you they really feel like they are sinking down. They don't really understand what is happening, other than they would soon be looking down a long and uncertain road. So you are in good company if you don't really understand what is happening as you look down a long and uncertain road. Even though in the midst of this baffling scene of Jesus flying up, there is something tremendously hopeful about the Ascension. The hope of the Ascension is, is not that there is some kind of surprise ending where the God who only seemed to be human is suddenly revealed as a superhero in disguise, triumphantly flying upward to rule with power and might from heaven's throne. That vision of the event would have been antithetical to the journey and the world before them. 
It would also have been antithetical to the life Jesus led, which was characterized by a refusal to participate in the corrupt ways of empire, even unto death. Rather, the hope of the ascension is that the particular person of Jesus, who was born in difficult circumstances in a particular time, was also particularly present to the hurting and vulnerable people in a particular place, that this Jesus is not an experiment or an illusion or a sham. This person is the God who now ascends in order to be everywhere present. The disciples glimpse something eternal in Jesus. And so they begin to feel the courage to relax a bit as they face the journey ahead. There is the promise of Jesus' spirit remaining with them to keep them afloat that they now feel in their bones. And maybe it finally sinks in that the love of their dear friend that transformed their lives is about to transform so many more lives. Jesus going up gives hope to what's about to happen below. Hope to face the challenges of living our faith. Hope that does not die in the face of oppression or pandemic or goodbye. Hope that is grounded in the conviction that Jesus' spirit stays with us. So yeah, it feels a bit like we are living in quicksand these days like we are maybe being sucked down into this bottomless pit the more we struggle. But Jesus flying up, up, and away says that the story is far from over. Jesus ascends in order to be present everywhere with new people, in new places, with new opportunities, and with a totally new understanding of grace. And that is the one thing that is set in stone, the grace of God. Grace that says you are loved, you matter, you belong no matter what. Grace that will keep you afloat in this mushy, sinking mess no matter what. So may you relax your body, mind, and soul in this unchangeable assurance.